Hello again, everybody. This is a uh, simple and neat case that's useful for both radiology residents and uh, students uh, would find it useful uh, from both a uh, clinical perspective and from an imaging perspective. We're looking at an axial image of the paranasal sinuses. You have anterior here, posterior here, right on this side and left on this side. Uh, for students, you're looking at the patient from the feet and we're gonna scroll from above below now this is the same patient we're looking at a coronal image meaning that this is patient's top or head this is below or in fear this is right and this is left now we're going through the images from posterior to anterior from back to front as you see the orbits and you see the nasal cavity here again let's go in reverse now let's leave that case and compare it to a normal case in this normal patient we're concentrating on this structure here this here is the nasal septum which is classically bony in posterior component so you could see bone which is white and cartilaginous that's why you see soft tissue density anteriorly so anterior cartilage posterior bone now there are many pathologies that could occur regarding the nasal septum uh, we look at many things for example you look if the nasal septum is deviated uh, if the nasal septum has a bone spur and other classic things that residents will look for However, one of the things that are less common, and that's why, despite being abnormal, might go unnoticed, is perforation or discontinuity of the nasal septum. And that's what we're gonna see on the other abnormal case. Back to the abnormal case, you'll notice that the nasal septum at one point seems to be continuous, but as you scroll, you have this discontinuity or a big defect. So there is a big area of perforation within the nasal septum, mostly involving the cartilaginous part. And that's what's classic. The cartilaginous part is more fragile than the bony part. And that's why perforations occur most commonly in that region. On the same abnormal case, looking at the coronal images, you see the posterior part of the septum seems to be okay. But as you go more anteriorly, you have this area of deficiency the septum should be continuous all the way downwards. So this is the area of perforation that we saw on the axial image as well. The first reason I'm showing this case is to direct the attention of the radiologist, especially junior radiologist, to always check the continuity of the septum because if this defect is small, it might go unnoticed. The second reason I'm showing this is to talk about the causes of such an abnormality, which is also important for students from a clinical perspective. The first reason nasal septal perforation occurs is usually traumatic, uh, which could be iatrogenic, for example, previous surgical intervention, or could be induced by the patient himself, such as nose picking, which is usually not recommended. Reason number two would be that of drugs, whether legal or illegal. So legal drugs such as topical steroids or topical uh, decongestants, uh, illegal drugs, uh, famously cocaine. Category number three would be that of uh, inflammatory conditions, uh, famously, uh, two in particular. One is Wegener's granulomatosis, or what's known currently as granulomatosis with polyangitis. That's the new name for it. Or sarcoidosis. The fourth category would be that of infection. A current famous infection that could lead to that would be tuberculosis. A classic old infection is that of syphilis infection. Finally, the category of neoplasm, uh, any kind of neoplastic abnormality in the nasal cavity could lead to erosion, uh, perforation, or destruction of the nasal uh, septum. So uh, a classic entity would be that of lymphoma, 
another entity would be that of uh, squamous cell carcinoma or metastasis. To summarize, always check the continuity of the nasal septum, which has an anterior cartilaginous component and a posterior osseous component. And once you see that, remember the causes for such an abnormality, which could be traumatic, drugs, inflammatory, infections, or malignancies. That's it for today's case. Uh, thanks for watching, and let's see you with more cases later.